What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. So excited to do this show uh, because, you know, if you guys have followed this channel, you know I'm kind of sing singularly focused on Wendy, um, sometimes Donna, but I think sometimes Harv uh, gets lost in the mix. So I want to talk about him, his involvement, um, and just go over it with two amazing guests, folks, who I've had on before. They both were so awesome. I'm going to read their bios, and I'm going to slow down because I feel like I get all jacked up in the beginning, and then I screw up the bio. So hold on. Let's take a breath. We got Jared Ross, who is awesome. He, is a, he was friends with Dan Markell. He's a Florida State University and FSU College of Law graduate. He's active in the Tallahassee community, having founded the FSU Jewish Alumni Network and serving on the board of lo several local organizations and committees. He is also an active member of the Florida Bar, having served in various governmental and legislative affairs positions in addition to association leadership. He's also on Twitter. Both his Twitter um, and Katie's are in the description. Follow, make sure to follow them. You'll see he hates Hamas and also Nelson Cortez from the Yankees. But what we can get into that another time. I also have Katie Bogenschutz, who is amazing. Both these guests are amazing. She spent nine years in the Broward State's attorney's office. She handled and tried a litany of criminal charges uh, after four years prosecuting general crimes, DUIs through and including attempted murder. She was promoted to the specialized sex crimes and child abuse unit where she stayed for over four years. Uh, after leaving there, she moved to Tall Tallahassee, where she joined the state's attorney's office. And in the three years spent there, she was designated to prosecute approximately one quarter of the sex crimes that occurred in Leon County. She also handled numerous homicides and attempted homicides during her tenure. Um, so without further ado, uh, my guests, Jared and Katie. What's up, guys? Good morning. Okay. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Uh, and, you know, speaking of Leon County, Kay, you were just recently uh, in, in front of Judge Everett, correct? Uh, yeah. He he doesn't just do uh, cameos for trials. He actually has an entire, he has a quarter of the criminal, well, circuit criminal felony cases in Leon County. There's only four felony judges in Leon. That's how relatively small it is. In other counties like Dade County, you might have 50 criminal judges. So um, he handles a quarter of the felony crimes that happen in Leon. Very cool. Um, and like I was saying, you know, we, I had both you on and we kind of did an all in, like comprehensive talk about all, all the players involved. But we did both with both of you guys. We did touch on Harvey. And I want to start with that with both of you guys. I want to start with you, Katie, because you talked about uh, the police interview with is it Tamara or Tamara? I've heard it. It's Tamara Demko. Tamara. Uh, it's Tamara. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Tamara. So with Tamara Demko, okay, you talked about that. Could you know, could you talk about that and you know what your thoughts were and how that could pot potentially be a problem for for Harvey if he is ever, you know, charged. So I and I think Jared was friends with it or is, not was, friends with her as well. I am. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, but I she is just so perceptive. Um and she was saying that Donna was acting the way that you would expect somebody to act and that Harvey would not meet her eye. And uh, they, then they go into this because I re-listened re to her interview again. They were going through like, well, he's not like one of these autistic kids that like just doesn't look anybody in the eye. He's usually interactive. He's usually um, he's usually and she's met him several times before and that this was a marked difference in how he interacted with her. So that's not real, like solid evidence, but based on how correct she's been about other things, I tend to uh, give it a lot more credence. I'll put it that way. And Jared, what do you think about that? And also the fact, do you, do you think she could potentially be in a witness uh, in not only Donna, but if Harvey gets charged in their trials? Yeah, I definitely uh, think Tamara could be a potential witness um, for, for a whole bunch of things. She, you know, she was close with Wendy. I know that Wendy and she confided in each other about a lot of things. Um, you know, I, I really feel terrible for Tamara because she's been thrust into this awful situation. But let me tell you, she's she's a good person. Um, she wants to do the right thing. And like Katie said, she's very perceptive. Um, she has 
seen a lot of things and, and said a lot of things that have come true throughout the evidence of, of all of these trials. So I, I think it's very possible that uh, she could end up on the on the witness stand. I, you know, I hope for her sake she doesn't because being a witness would never be fun. Um, but she has a lot of good information and, and you know, that that interview shows it. And, and obviously, like, they're not going to charge Harvey just on the fact that maybe she, no. you know, she thought he acted differently. However, if there's a trial and then she's testifying, that's that's something that'll have weight on the jurors. Right. Okay? Like, that's something like if they're paying attention to this, they'll be like, wait, wait a second. He was he was completely different from when they first like at different times that they hung out together. Yeah. And this is the death of a son in law that, that it, there was apparently no love lost among them. So, I mean, you, you're not expecting him to be on the floor sobbing, but the fact that he's just not even meeting somebody's eyes and that she thought that she may have given him a nasty look at some point and that he may have been taken aback by it and then just wasn't meeting, as opposed to what normal people would do is just say, hey, Tamara, you, you, you can't possibly think that I had anything to do with this and it just not addressing it. Right. Yeah. The, the, the distance, um, you know, there, I can't remember exactly how she described it, but what I would describe is like a vapidness. Um, he, you know, not, not willing to look in the eyes. That's kind of a, that, that that's a look of guilt. Um, again, like you said, Jay, that is not overwhelming evidence of guilt, but you know, there's, there's certainly a feeling there like, Hmm, what, what does all Harvey know? Right. And speaking of the, to what you brought up in our interview, Jared, was this is now this is we're talking about actual evidence. And I think actual things that could be a problem for Harvey, his car. Where does his car go? Are we to believe that his car goes to uh, Katie and he has no idea? Right. I mean, does he has just no idea? All of a sudden, Charlie's like, can I give this car to Katie? And we're to believe that just he has no idea why. And, and there's no evidence that she paid for it. Um, I, I think maybe they tried to show that she paid for it. I can't remember specifically, but there's well, just she claims again, she paid for it. yeah, she yeah, she claimed she paid for it. Uh, but there's just there are so many coincidences in this case. You know, I've said it many times. There's just so many coincidences in this case that it's hard to believe there are that many coincidences. And the car is just another one. And I think Yindra, because I was watching her testimony, Yindra said she did not pay for it. She she was not aware of her paying for it. So that's just another witness who we were talking to. Hopefully, she doesn't have to try any uh, testify in any future trials. But uh, you know that was. Yeah, I think she may she may have said that even Katie told her it was a gift from Charlie or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and also, Katie, talk about what about the checks that Donna signed? Are we to believe that just Harvey had no idea from the Adelson Institute? Are we to just believe that? Harvey has no idea these checks are going to her. Like, like, isn't that like damning evidence, Katie? What do you What do you think? Yeah, it, well, I mean, so there's there's people that have businesses now. Granted, not lawyers because there's specific rules about uh, money and lawyers and ethics. But um, there there are people that run companies that just kind of outsource the bookkeeping to others. And I I can't tell you that that's what happened here, and especially because they're married. But that is some kind of a plausible explanation, um, or at least it's enough to where I think he hasn't been charged. There's also uh, the checks that were being written were after the fact, not before the, the homicide happened, not while they were plotting. And the accessory after the, flat, the fact statute in Florida, which is 77703, which I have pulled up, and I think this is part of their problem, is uh, it, it specifically immunizes members of the immediate family by blood or marriage. So he would be immunized uh, from wow. being an accessory after the fact, which is uh, one of those things that kind of makes you go, mm, as a prosecutor, just like, you know, but it is, it's one of those things. So um, 77703 says any person not standing in the relation of husband or wife, parent or grandparent, child or grandchild, brother or sister, by consanguinity, blood, or affinity, marriage, who maintains or assists the principal or an accessory before the fact or gives the offender any other aid, knowing the offender had committed a crime or had been an accessory to before the fact with the intent that the offender avoids or escapes detection, arrest, trial, punishment, is an accessory after the fact. So, yeah. Why is that even a law? Like, why can't you? It shouldn't like, be. That's, that's, that's wild. 
Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things in law here in Florida that shouldn't be. Yeah. But, but I think that's part of the issue is if he knew about it afterward and he helped them try to get away with it afterward, the question is, did he know about it when it happened and when they were planning about it? That's interesting because that's a lot of comments I get is, um, well, I don't think he knew about it, but he's an accessory after the fact. Well, there you go, folks. If he was, there's nothing we could do about it. But I don't believe it. We, I think he knew before. And let's talk about their emails, Jared. We were talking about this before we came on. But, you know, Wendy talks about in the police interview how they've been married 40 years. And this cute, and then she talks about in her testimony. Oh, you know, they have this joint email that because the, the email is like, are we to believe, Jared, that he is on this joint email, but he never reads any of these emails that are going back and forth with the vitriol. And he has no idea what's going on with all this stuff. I, I personally find it very difficult to believe that he had no idea what was going on in, in email land of, of Donna. You know, I think it was like Donna and Harvey Adelson at whatever it was. They both have access to it. We know that. And, and we're going to find out some more because they have seized those uh, iPads and computers and phones and things like that. Uh, but it's very difficult for me to believe that in a joint email and in a family as close knit as the Adelsons, that they did not include Harvey in these conversations. Uh, in fact, there were times where I believe in the email that, that Don even said, your father and I, or dad and I, and things like that. Uh, you know, and I, I come from a pretty close knit family, not like the Adelsons. I mean, my, my, my mom is a, you know, Jewish mother from Brooklyn also. And so, you know, there are things that I, I can relate with, but she's not nearly as overbearing as Donna was. Um, but we share a lot, you know, we talk a lot and I, there's no way the things that I tell my mom or that my mother and I converse about that she doesn't share with my dad. They're still married. They still live together. They don't have a joint email address, but they converse and they talk about how their kids are doing. And Harvey was well aware of the situation between Danny and Wendy and the kids and her wanting to move and all of that stuff. So I just, it's impossible to believe. And then one other thing, you listen to all the phone calls, the jail calls that that Donna had with Charlie. Harvey's on every one of them, um, and and I know that that's a little different situation because their son's in, in jail now, awaiting to be transferred to prison. But I can almost guarantee you that Wendy was calling home from Tallahassee, and all three of them were on the phone together. You know, I'm sure it was the same situation. So, you know that that's there's just no way Harvey was not you know, in the know on what was going on. Right. And Katie, during the trial, one of the things I've, I've said this before, that presentation they did with all the arrows going from, you know, from Charlie, it wasn't to just Donna. Like they made a point when they did those presentations, it was to Donna and Harvey um, and, and messages. Like, so like, isn't that, and by the way, what's the number they call, they talk about, they, they had that, I mean, this is Charlie, but they had the pie chart and they had the amount of times and what's the little sliver. It's the landline. It's their home line. Right. Katie. So like, how could like why wouldn't a jury believe now i guess it's a question of charging him so that's a difference right, right. so it's not enough you think to get a, a, like to arrest him uh right now obviously because they haven't even though he also was was fleeing but but, but what is it is you think it's just the focus now is on donna then then maybe him next what do you think katie i think they're still going through those uh ipads computers phones um, it, it would shock you how long it, it takes to go through uh, some of these things uh, in order to, to download a phone and then to be able to go through every bit of data that is both in the phone and on the cloud. Um, I, I, I remember waiting for months and months for them. Um, and in, in this case, uh, I get the feeling they're probably jumped to the front of the line. But even then, uh, it's, it's going to go through multiple people, multiple uh, things and he's also he's turning 80 I think um, and how much is he texting it seems like he relied on Donna for quite a bit of the communication with the kids she was talking for both of them right that's, it's interesting so that's uh, let me ask you this when when you get that as a prosecutor when you get that like you know they have to download is it it's given to you not in any sort of digestive like you have to have someone in the office like go through everything right like or or does or does the person who like download it put it in some sort of a you know a format where you could tell this is in inbound outbound keywords yeah so there's uh cellbrite is uh uh it's, it's software that you can plug the phone into 
Um, they, they actually did it to Wendy's phone when she was in the interview. So it can download it really quick, but then it has to digest it and put it into this document that's a PDF document. Um, I remember joking with uh, a colleague of mine, like, how many pages do you think the contents of an 18-year-old girl's iPhone are? Like your typical 18-year-old Gen Z. And I, I was like, I don't know, 10,000, 10,000 pages. And they were like, ha, 40,000 wow. pages. So, but they, but they tend to, you, you can convert them into PDF documents. You can do like control F to look for a word or look for a number. Um, I found that to be very helpful. And then you can try to uh, uh, like condense it into, okay, I just want this person and this person, but it, it takes hundreds of hours to go through that stuff. And I'm sure they've got investigators on it, especially yeah. if you had an iPhone from the beginning and you've got everything since 2008 right. on that phone. Uh, right. And Jared, to your point, like he is always on, like you hear him, you just hear him on those phone calls, which obviously is after the fact, but it kind of, leads to the fact that he's always there like he is there and also it leads to the fact uh, in those calls half the time they don't even realize that they're they don't that, that they're recorded they think they hung up or they have their whatever it is but like here's what i think about like the the device i want to get your thoughts jared they may have like deleted some things you know but like do they do you think they even know how to delete a sent item like do you like us like do you are they aware of this sent folder like I, I i feel like they're not gonna have anything inbound no i'm talking about wendy but inbound them from from wendy but they might have stuff that got sent to her what what, not, what do you think Jerry? i i mean regardless of whether you delete it or not it's still there right and, and that's i you know they certainly did not spend the time or money to go to some sort of a hacker to get all that stuff deleted um there's just you know that that's the thing is as much as you think you may have deleted something it still lives on in the cloud and we saw that with charlie's uh trial and with, with Katie McBanwa's trial as well, is they thought they deleted things that miraculously reappear in the cloud. And I think we're we're a little more aware of the cloud now in 2024 than we probably were in 2014 when all this occurred. And so maybe they you know spent some time since 2014 trying to scrub things, but you can only scrub so much. Uh, and as you, you know, the one thing I always say when it comes to like when it comes to hackers and 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 fraudulent crimes like that you know no matter what we do to protect ourselves the hackers are always a step ahead of us and that's because they are really smart and that's the same with these the law enforcement folks that are getting this information is no matter what you think you're going to do to delete this stuff they're a step ahead of you and they're going to learn and they're going to know how to get it from your you know your deleted items your your cloud whatever it may be so it's going to be there they're going to find stuff and it's just a matter of how long it takes like katie said it, it is not easy and there are there's so much metadata involved in this that it's going to take time but they're working on it well speaking of that kate and you could speak to that kate so they're working on that data. We, Donna's trial is coming up. It's coming up. Like it's it's right there, folks. September. So if you're in, the, if they're tell us about like that office right now. Are they like all? Like, do they have a team? Because they have to get all this presentable. They have to they have to exchange it in discovery, right? Like what what is going on in that office right now to prepare all this information that they're just getting that they just got warrants for? They've got the FBI on this. They have manpower. They have probably very close to unlimited resources. And I get the feeling a large portion of that is being poured into this case. Um, I also think that, you know, when you're talking about somebody who is their age, 73, not as 73, I believe, and that uh, Harvey's going to be turning 80, that you, you need to be able to put the phone in somebody's hand, too. So you're going to be, if you don't need to use it, you won't, um, unless you're trying them both together. So uh, you need to be able to prove that like, you know, like, for example, my husband and I have each other's pin codes. And if his hand like, you know, he's cooking dinner, he'd be like, oh, hey, pick up my phone. You know, tell my dad I'm fine, you know, that he hasn't heard from me today. So it, it and I this family is even further enmeshed in a very unhealthy way than, than mine is. And it, I, I you would need to prove who made the phone call and who said what, and who said the text message. Um. I also think that they may not, it, it, I kind of feel like Donna 
may not have used WhatsApp appropriately. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just that even in her early 60s, can you imagine somebody, it, it was relatively new back then too, um, that there's no way she didn't slip up and accidentally send a text message instead of a WhatsApp message. Right. Yeah, we're talking about someone that doesn't even know how to hang up the phone properly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, and I wanted to ask you this, but so you you brought up Katie, I think, or, or Jack, I forgot which you guys brought up, but that he's eighty, right? He's eighty. She's seventy three. Jared, how much do you think in their defense, especially you know for Donna's trial, how much do you think they're going to lean into the like they're they're just like uh, first of all, I was thinking about this today. The trial is, is Harvey going to be? You think he's going to be in the gallery every day? Uh, and like, are they going to wheel them in, in like a wheelchair? Are they going to try to make them like just look at like these frail old couple that could have no idea? And also, second to that, uh, like if Harvey's in the gallery every day, if you think he is, if Wendy comes in, does he even acknowledge? Do they acknowledge each other? Like uh, the whole, it's going to be fascinating. I'm curious your thoughts on that, Jared. I, I would suspect that they keep Harvey away from being in the gallery um, the same way that Harvey and Donna were not there for Charlie's trial. Um, I, you know, I, I think that they probably just don't want that interaction or that circus. Um, so I, I would suspect that he's probably not going to be there. Um, I could be totally wrong, but as far as wheeling her in, they're, they're going to do everything they can to make her look like the, you know, sweet old grandma and, and make sure that, you know, she is, you know, portrayed like, uh, what's his name? Like Rashbaum tried to portray her when he did that interview, you know, she's so kind and polite. And I mean, we all know that that's not true. We saw the way she acted in the courtroom, um, right. but they're going to try and make her look as frumpy as possible. And, you know, that she is the, this sweet old grandma. I mean, literally, it's it's seven minutes, like within her second appearance in front or her first appearance with in front of Judge Everett. And she can't he literally has to say, ma'am, shut up like you can't be. And she's the faces we've all seen those pictures. I mean, Katie, what do you think it's going to be like when, when it's her her trial? She's sitting there. I mean, Charlie was an idiot making faces and laughing like a total jackass. Like, wh what do you think it's going to be like to, to have Don up there uh, in that trial? So one of the the stresses and problems about being a criminal defense attorney is client control. Um, and uh, a lot of times people are sitting next to you in a courtroom on trial because they don't have a lot of self-control. They may have done something very, very bad based on their inability to have any breaks on their actions. So in, in this case, it, it sounds like I, I think that Rashbaum is probably going to have a lot better control over her than the attorney that was sitting in there for him previously, just because of the length of the uh, relationship and the trust that I assume is there. But I think she's going to be so, it, it, she can't not. I, I think it's, the, this is eating away at her. Her cell's going to be like Charlie's with all the evidence in there. And she's going to have like a bunker with with all the, the transcripts and everything. And she's going to be micromanaging the entire trial the way she micromanages everything else based on what I know about her. And it's going to be a pain in the rear end to represent her. <laughs> Yeah. And Jay, Jay, if I can, I can make one point about the trial. I've seen a lot of conversation on social media um, and on other things about how, you know, they moved the trial up two weeks and it was a bad call by by them to, you know, try and pull the quote unquote Jew card, um, you know, making her want to celebrate the Jewish holidays. That was done for Rashbaum. You know, he uh, he wanted to be home to celebrate the holiest days of the Jewish calendar uh, with his family. Um, I get a little frustrated. I have no love for the Adelsons or for Rashbaum, you know, for any of them. But I have no problem with him asking for this trial to be moved up for two weeks so that he could celebrate Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur at home. Um, otherwise, it would be like asking a Christian attorney to have trial on Christmas or Easter. That's how these the, those two days in the Jewish calendar are to us is those are the two most important holidays. So I just I've gotten into a few uh, conversations about that. So I just wanted to, to point that out. They are the true holy, you know, high holy holidays. And I can tell you that I'm sure the Markells are happy that they're not having to, to spend Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur here as well. 
honestly, it's, to me, it was kind of surprising that they even scheduled it in the first place. I don't think they realized it. Because, yeah, it, it, you know, I handle cases in New York, bodily interest cases, and I would go to courtrooms. And I, I learned about Jewish holidays and, and my dad's Jewish, and, and like that I didn't even know about. They would like, they would like vary, they had their cat, like there were, there's Suk, Sukkot, I, I forget what it's yeah. called. But yeah, so like it, it's surprising to me, like that. But I, but I, like you said, they made the mistake and they fixed it. Like if anyone Correct. has a problem with that, what are you, an idiot? First of all, it's quicker. Let's get her quicker. Like what, what, why would yeah. you have a problem with that? Like the, the sooner the better. Like, she goes, the, the more, you know, I, I don't want to wait. Like let's do it now. What, 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 what people totally have a problem agree. with that? Like get out of here. Uh, I can't believe people. Sorry, I went on went no, on a side no, no, there, no, but I uh, apologize at all. I'm glad yeah. you brought that up. If anyone has a problem with that, what the hell is wrong with you? That's so dumb. Yep. What are you, an idiot? And like you said, the Markells, that's better for them too. So yep. shut up, you idiots. Um, <laughs> uh, what what else? What else do I have here? Uh, by the way, am I am I forgetting? Let me ask you, Katie. Am I forgetting ev any evidence that you think is important in in potentially charging? uh harvey uh, and arresting him is there, is there more that like they could be looking at I, like you said they're still they're looking at the devices now so they're probably really looking for some some gold nuggets in there but is there anything that like that that you think think of that like is really important that we haven't brought up yet so some people have shower thoughts i have thoughts while i'm walking my dog um and last mm. night it's and uh, jared will probably attest to this to you where jpt i went to pinecrest on the east side of town okay yep. so so like, how long do you think it takes on a Friday night to get from South Beach to East Fort Lauderdale? It it, it takes a while. Like an hour and a half, two hours? At least. Right. At least. With that kind of traffic. Uh, so, I mean, Harvey was there for the dump, for the drop off of the cash. There's no oh, way he yes. wasn't. They didn't go back. And uh, they didn't go back and pick up Harvey or have him meet them or anything like that. There's no way. Uh, the the amount of traffic between it, like if you have not lived down there, you don't understand what it is to scream into a steering wheel. There it's is awful. no way he was not in the car with her. Yeah, it's, with, for the drop it's, off the cash. It, it's a good it, it on a good day, even when there's not traffic, it'll take you an hour to get from South Beach to to where Charlie lived in Fort Lauderdale. On Maybe a in the middle night, of the night, it would take yeah. you that long. Yeah, and and. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. And you're putting your life in your own hands on I-95 also. So, <laughs> yeah. well, and also let's think about this point. Uh, you know, I thought about this. We know we have the call. We literally have the call in that police interview of Wendy calling them. And, and she's like, you know, I need help. Where do they go? They don't go to Wendy right away. That's not their first thought. They're, they're grandkids. And Wendy, they drive to Charlie. They drive to Charlie first. If I called my parents in that situation, they would have hauled their ass, hung that up, got their stuff, came to help me. They don't do that. They and then they spent the night in Orlando. They didn't just drive all the way through. Right. Yeah. That's another like. I, I can tell you my parents would be on the, you know, they, they would be switching off and driving through and making sure. I mean, it's a long drive and it's a monotonous and terrible drive from South Florida to Tallahassee. But it's not undoable even in the middle of the night. Right. It, when, well, especially with that daughter, kind of adrenaline yeah. rush. Yeah. And when your daughter is going through a, you know, supposedly traumatic experience. Right. With her toddlers. Right. right. They're like, the, the, and that's just, I was thinking about that. The grandkids, like, they would, my parents would be like, I, I'll help you. You need help. I got you. I'll, I'll help you with that. And then you do what you have to do with everything. I will help you with that. Um, so, yeah, and I want to actually I want to bring up something here because it really, you know, I do a lot of content on this. And, and one thing that never that makes me just so angry is the fact that not only did obviously I think Wendy was a part of this, but then she goes and and, and takes the grandkids. She, she she won't let the grandkids see Ruth and Phil. And, and it makes me so freaking angry. And here's the question I have for you. You would think if she, you know, she thinks she's brilliant. Everyone, think, you know, she's smart. She kept herself. There's not so much data on here, but you would think an outsider looking in to think if she was guilty or not, if she would just have the, the grandkids, she would just be like, hey, whenever you want to see him, that would make her look more innocent. Don't you think like that would make her look less guilty if she was like, here, see the kids whenever you want. But don't you think her doing that makes her look more guilty? Like, I, I don't know. What do you think, Jared? Oh, I, I still to this day cannot understand why she didn't ensure that those kids were seen by the Markells while they were here in Tallahassee, 
um, you know, she kept pushing it off and then she called her and said, Oh, we're gone. You know, yeah. we're, we're in South Florida. That's like red. That's a huge red flag. Um, I, I, and I understand that there was, there was not a great relationship between Wendy and Ruth and, and Phil at that point. But at the end of the day, she even said, I remember Wendy saying in something that she wanted to ensure that her kids had a relationship with, with, you know, her ex-husband's family. Well, she did everything opposite of that. I mean, she got the hell out of Dodge as quick as she could. I remember I saw her at that, uh, at the Memorial on Sunday, um, did not get to talk to her. Uh, you know, I, 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 I can remember her walking into the temple uh, holding one of the kids and holding the hand of the other kid, um, Donna right by her. I, I don't even remember seeing Harvey. Apparently he was there, um, but she kind of looked like in a daze. She was out the door, you know, shortly after the memorial ended. And then I guess she was on the road the next day. Like yeah. that's just ridiculous. She, you know, it's in Ruth's book. She, she told Ruth, she was like, uh, yeah, like the day before she's like, yeah, we'll, we'll set something up. And then yep. she, Ruth can't get in contact with her. And all of a sudden she, she finally does contact her. And she's like, I'm already gone. She was like already gone. Yeah. Like, I mean, but that's, you know, then we're talking about a jury when Wendy is arrested at that point, who's going to see that and be like, this is an absolute, like, Katie, like, what do you think a jury's going to think if, if hopefully, you know, she is arrested, that's got to be like, just like any person who has a any sort of heart wouldn't that be just like a like tough for a jury not to be like wow what a monster and it, it's it's also i mean the lack of empathy for another human being who's had that kind of even somebody you hate you despise i mean you have your own children you know what it would do to you and to not give them this opportunity and to change their names to like oh, wipe yes. him off that uh, so that was actually one thing that bothered my husband the most. And I wasn't really thinking about it from a, from a, from that kind of a perspective, but like Ruth and Phil don't have any other grandchildren whose last name is Markel. Like she is ending that line right there. And I was like, mm, that's a good point. Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. just wiping them off the planet. But she couldn't like to, to me, like she uh, it, could this be like my my wife Shannon would say? Which, by the way, folks, at eleven fifteen, Shannon has a video that's gonna I'm gonna send you guys to. It's she's it's a half hour on Wendy. But do you think like part of it? She would say it's like she didn't want to face like it's like she the consciousness of guilt where she doesn't want to face them. She doesn't want to she doesn't want to see Ruth and Phil because like she knows what she did. Do you think that's part of it, Jared? Yeah, I I think that is part of it. I you know. I, at the time when all this happened, and, and I've been very clear that for a long time, I, I did not want to believe that Wendy had anything to do with this. I thought it was just the shock of everything that I, you know, I, I can't, you can't put yourself in, in those shoes and understand what they're going through. But the more and more evidence that comes out and the more and more we hear about it, it's not shock, it's evil. Um, it's, it's pure, unadulterated evil. Um, especially the changing that let, you know, Katie just brought it up, the changing the name, uh, changing the middle name because she didn't like the middle name. Um, she, you know, I, I, I just can't even imagine that. Uh, I've got two kids of my own. Um, I'm, you know, still married and my wife and I, you know, I hope she likes me. Um, but <laughs> at the end of the day, like if anything were to ever happen, I couldn't imagine her changing their names. Right. It's just, it's, it's like an ultimate insult. Evil. Like she really just, just, yeah. just a, that's why she's such a monster. She makes me so freaking angry when I think about her. Sorry, go, go ahead, Katie. Go, you were going to say something. Oh, no, it's, it's also, I mean, and it, what, one thing that really bothered me, and this is kind of a tangent, is when you think about the money that she went and she took during the divorce, who has that much liquid? And it makes me wonder, right? Like, I mean, I think it was like it was an account that had like $600,000. Even if you have the money, which great, good for you, but like, you know, they're in investments, you have to ask somebody to sell them for you, you've got a manager, whatever. But like, who has that sitting liquid in a bank where you can just walk over to the bank and say, write me a check for 300K? And it makes me wonder whether things were being liquidated in or behind his back or what. I mean, the finances to me are, are always fascinating. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because they made a point in Charlie's trial to, there were some texts that had nothing to do with. The, the trial but they were like do you have this cash here do you and and, and harvey is one of the tax harvey's yeah. like no that wouldn't be good for me for tax whatever it was but like making it very clear 
uh, that they have cash around. And wh- who said that, you know, they're washing cash? Katie saying that, you know, she, she just says, um, she says Donna. But like you said, Harvey's there too, right? There's no way Harvey is not there too as they drop it off. Right, Jared? I mean, well, and, and there's another point where Harvey talks to Charlie. It was on the phone. It was one of the... Uh, the recorded phone calls when they were tapping Charlie's phones about moving money, you know, from one safe to another, your pile, my pile, my, you know, all that stuff. So th- this is a family that dealt a lot in cash. <clears throat> so, you know, it's funny when Charlie says that, you know, when, when Katie came in and told him about what had happened and he's like, I don't have that much money. But then, then he said, what I meant is I could write a check and not have to take out a loan for that much money. Well, then you do have that much money. Right. You may not have cash on hand, but if you can write a check for it, then you do have that much money. So, you know, one, one of the things that I wonder about going back to Harvey and, and evidence on Harvey, they spent a lot of time and effort on um, getting a better version of the Dolce Vita tape and making sure that that was a key piece of evidence you know, Katie is a former prosecutor. I wonder, do you think that they're doing anything with that that That's Matt really, Suri tape yeah. between Charlie and Harvey? Um, because that could be a huge piece of evidence if they were able to get that kind of deciphered a little bit. That's such a good point. What do you think, Katie? Oh, absolutely. Um, but so at one point in that tape, and I believe it's that tape, they they think that the uh the people following them were made made yep. meaning that they were just he whether or not they knew for sure or something right so anything prior hmm. to that that's said under the breath is is suspect um i i get the feeling that they're probably having the same people work on it and the fact that we haven't seen it yet um that we didn't see it at charlie's trial uh which was a wholly circumstantial case albeit a strong one makes me believe they're either still working on it or they were unable to get anything from it. Yeah. And Uh, it's also, it was at a sushi bar where they were sitting at the bar. So the acoustics are a little bit different and they may just have failed. Yeah. And I mean that, like you said, that's an important part. They had to have the guy come in, talk about the, the, you know, the uh, equipment or, or the program they use. Like that great point, Jared, that's a really good point. So imagine there's something on there. Go ahead. No, I just, I, it's, it's one of those things that ever since, I saw that tape, you know, it was kind of on the heels of the the Dolce Vita stuff. I've been thinking, I wonder if they could enhance this and and get anything out of that. Um, Cause it, it's very, very difficult to understand what's going on in there. Um, and there are points, you know, Katie, you brought it up where, where he kind of whispers to Harvey and, and what did he say that I told him I'm being extorted. I mean, right. yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what you said, because if that were the case, your dad, I, if I went to my dad, and in the middle of a, a restaurant, I said, Dad, I'm being extorted. He'd probably freak out. Yeah. He wouldn't be like, oh, well, that's good. Let's talk about it outside. <laughs> excellent I mean, point. Um, that's an excellent point. Go ahead, Katie. Or, or like, let's not talk about it on the phone at all in case the right. cops are listening, too. No, we get the cops involved. Right. Right. Let's go to the police. Right. 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 Let's not uh, talk about Although that. Rashbaum says you shouldn't go to the police, right? No, don't go to the TV is 5K. We'll figure this out. I mean, what an absolute uh, uh, So I want to share something with you guys. It was interesting. I when I, I posted on YouTube today and I said I talked about the interview and I did a poll. I want to get before I show you guys, I want to get I asked and we have 104 votes so far. And I said, let me know what you think. Will Harvey Adelson be charged in Dan Markell's murder? 100 votes. What do you guys think? Yes or no? If you had a guess, Jared, you first and Katie, what do you think the percentage of people that think that Harvey and that and remind you, this is this is people who follow me. Who, uh, most of them, I think, think that he. Well, anyway, go ahead. What, what do you think the percentage is, Jared? If you had a guess, hmm. I'm going to guess forty percent say he will. What do you think, Katie? I I'd give it about fifty percent, but I I also think that I think Donna will do fine in jail. Um, I think Harvey will do not well without Donna. So I I don't know if we even get there. So uh, here we go. Here are the results. Let's hopefully this works. Oops, I got to take over this thing. Drum roll. We got Ooh, okay. Seventy-two wow. percent think that uh, of the people that voted on this that he will not be arrested. And here's a comment that I wanted to talk about. Uh, let me see. Um, 
I don't think I thought this was an interesting. Call. I don't think Harvey is necessary. He wasn't a main player. He may have known about it at the moment it was done in front of the whole thing, but only because John had dragged in into it. And I'm like, if he's, you know, if 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 he's involved, I know, I know we have like like I said before when I started this, I know we have like a lot of us have like a laser focus on on Donna and, and Wendy. But if he's involved at all, he goes down. I don't care. Like like it doesn't matter if it was a little bit or. If he knew, right? Like he's got to go down. I, like to me, like I, that doesn't matter. Like if he's involved in this at all, which I think he was, he's got to go down. I don't care. He's eighty. I don't care. Don is seventy. They have to go down. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Jack? I mean, if you have culpability, you should be held accountable. Right. I mean, that's the bot. You know, I've I've had people who have said, "Well, Wendy shouldn't be charged uh, because she's got two little kids, and let's wait until the kids are old." No. If you had something to do with it, you should be arrested. You should be tried. And if you are found guilty, you should do time. I'm sorry. Like now, again, they are all innocent until proven guilty. Absolutely. But if they had anything to do with it, they should all be held accountable. I don't care, you know, if you're 80 years old. I don't care if, you know, all you did was fund it. Well, if you funded it, you are part of the conspiracy. You, yeah, exactly. You knew it was happening. You were you were aiding and abetting it. You were you were a part of it. You're and if you're a part of it, you're. I mean, Katie, what do you? The prosecutor isn't thinking. Oh, he kind of only knew a little bit. Like, if you're the prosecutor, you don't give a shit, right? No, of course not. Um, but it, it and and that's what's so fascinating about this case is almost like the slow walk to justice and people that are into true crime, people who go in to be prosecutors that go to law school. Like our kink is consequences. That is what we're into. And watching somebody walk away from it that we all deep in our souls know had something to do with it, that's something that keeps you up at night, whether you're a prosecutor, whether you're a cop, you're a defense attorney, that's something that keeps you up at night. And that's why this case is so fascinating. And uh, speaking of, so oh, people are innocent until guilty, but Charlie is guilty, right? So <laughs> how, how does that play in? Like, how do you think that plays in in, in Donna's trial and potentially uh Harvey's trial, they like obviously he's not gonna get called, right? But like they can they can they have free reign to bring that up, right? Jared? Like they can't, like they don't they they have to bring that obviously up, right? I mean, because if a jury is like, oh, the son was involved, why wouldn't they think the parents are involved, especially with all that we've talked about? Yeah, well, I mean, they could call him. Uh there's a possibility that he could be called as a witness. Um, I know I've I've heard that talked about a lot. Um, could he be compelled to testify? That's a whole nother story. Um, but you know that first of all i i believe like try charlie's trial was like a dress rehearsal for this trial um a lot of the same evidence that we heard in charlie's trial we're going to hear in this trial there will be nuances and some different things that we hear and um i actually some people disagree but i actually think they have more on donna than they even had on charlie um and you know what was it less than three hours for the, for them to convict him so you know, let's look for another quick verdict, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, it's going to be, uh, they're going to talk about the the conspiracy and how Charlie was involved and, um, you know, who all the players are here. What do you think? Like, how do they, they bring that up if he is not, first of all, do you, Katie, do you think the state would try to call him or, or, or like, how do they get that into the trial for Donna? So if you subpoena somebody similar to them subpoenaing Wendy, you end up with both use and derivative use immunity. Um, and, uh, nobody in their right mind would give that to Charlie without knowing what he would testify to first. The defense could call him without any sort of immunization. And, and frankly, he's already testified. So if he testifies consistent with that, um, maybe the defense would try to call him so that he could get his mom out of it. Um, I just, I just think it's a, he clearly went over like a box of rocks with the, the last jury, that explanation. And I, I think that they're going to try to use a similar defense in this case, which I think is a horrible idea. So I, I, I wouldn't call him if I were on the defense team. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I think the nuance that they're probably going to try and say is that Charlie told Donna about him being extorted and all she was doing was being the good mommy and trying to help her baby boy out. But Ugh. do you think she's going to testify by the way? <laughs> I mean, what, what do you guys think? You think Donna testifies? Go ahead, Katie. Katie, what do you think? Well, wild horses couldn't keep Charlie off the stand. I wonder if Donna would have a little bit more self-control, 
You don't I think, think so? She'll testify. She, we already showed us she has no. I mean, I, go ahead. I think I, I just don't know how they get her. And and I know that the defense does not have to present a case, but with all of the evidence that they have against her, I don't know how they explain things away without her testifying. Um, now, some people have said, we heard Rashbound say, you're going to hear from Donna, this, that, and the other thing. But what he could have meant is you're going to hear from our team about this. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to hear it from Donna's mouth, but I just can't imagine she does not get on the stand. Um, but she has to know once she gets on the stand, that opens her up to cross-examination too. And, and that ain't going to be pretty. I was just thinking that everyone close your eyes and just imagine Georgia with Donna up there. Like, oh. oof, oof. Either Georgia or Sarah, they would both be great. Yeah, against they would her. both be. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, and I, I agree with you, Jared. Like I, when I was, if you know, they asked, they had jury questions in the first trial. And I said, when I was, I'm like, if I, if they had jury questions in Charlie's, I feel like if I was a jury, I'd be like, is this Charlie's trial or Donna's trial? Like it was like so much the, the both of them, but um, yeah. And you would think she wouldn't testify, but also you would think that she wouldn't hire the man that found her son guilty. Like I talked about this before. There's a character in Lord of the Rings that like he talks to the King and like the King just, like no longer he, like, he's in their ear katie what do you think it is how did he he like you said this was uh, you know i said three hours and fancy was in the chat was like well they had lunch too don't forget that <laughs> yeah it was less than three hours um but uh how did he get katie what how how the hell did he convince them to, to handle this case after he just got a guilty verdict in like record time like what the hell so i I would have to think that, look, I, and I, I think I told you this before, like I was a state prosecutor for 12 years. You don't get to pick your cases like the feds do, you know, perfect ones. Um, and I lost some cases and I've still, I have victims whose cases I lost right. who still keep in contact with me. And I get the feeling that if something bad happened to them again, I might be their first phone call, even though I lost their case because they knew I was in it with them. They trust me um, as much, you know, I grieved the verdict with them those kinds of things. So I have to imagine it's something along those lines and how long they've known him and the level of trust that's been built up. Otherwise, and let's remember we crazy. And let's remember we heard on the the calls how much they think he did a bang up job and right. it was the uh it was a us uh stupid rednecks here in Tallahassee. That, yeah, that, that, yeah, we we can't, you know, we say y'all and we can't uh decipher what the truth is. So other than us it, South Florida transplants who really liked it up here. I mean, I'm I, I'm from Jersey and South Florida, and you know, I've lived in Tallahassee now almost 30 years. So, it, it was the uh, Super Bowl for you hillbillies, and you That's got right. it wrong. Like, how did you guys the, mess the that Super up? Bowl? I, I I always laugh at that because he talked about it being the Super Bowl, although it was the same week as the FSU Miami game, which was a hell of a lot bigger deal here in Tallahassee than Charlie Adelson's trial. <laughs> that's that's a, that's interesting. You uh, could turn Charlie's jail calls into a, like a bingo game oh with the gosh. Kansas City Chiefs and the Dolphins and the Super Bowl and the Dateline and the you know it's just because he repeats himself, repeats himself. I, I feel bad for his cellmate. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's remarkable that he hasn't been shanked yet. Or he's a new. Maybe that's why he left and went to his new place, right? I mean, he's got. They probably hated him so much. Who knows what what's going well, on? With that? I kind of joked. I'll bet you Harvey right now is like, "Holy cow, I'm living in peace. Like, <laughs> I don't have Donna in my ear. I only have to talk to Charlie when I want to. It's like yeah. it's quiet here. <laughs> and he's not calling me at all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I wonder, by the way, that's a that's a good point. Just in the fact, like. What is he doing on his devices? You know, we didn't talk about this. We, we talked about emails. We talked about text. But what about Google searches? Like, who knows? And by the way, also, he was he was he had a ticket to Vietnam, too. Uh, talking about Harv and consciousness of guilt. I mean, they got Donna, but Harv was on that plane, too. Right, Kitty? I mean, isn't that a little consciousness? Of yeah. Guilt? And, and that's that's when I started looking up accessory after the fact, because it's not often you can really seriously pr you either know about the crime when it happens or you don't, and maybe there's some plausible deniability. It's not that often that you have a true accessory after the fact that you can prove as a prosecutor. In this case, you have it on him. He's just immunized by statute. Man, that so you really need to prove he was involved in the actual offense. I feel like someone, someone put in the chat what's FSU's recent record against Miami. By the way, we're, we've are we won the last three so and beat them in baseball last night. So go Knowles. By the way, do you uh, do you especially hate uh, Pete Alonzo and Harrison Bader uh, on the Mets of Florida Gators, uh, former 
Uh, you know, I mean, it's hard to – well, I can't hate Bader. I mean, he was a Yankee for, oh, that's for true. a year and a half. So that's plus, true. Plus a good Jewish center fielder. It's like my my son. So, <laughs> you know. But, so you still uh, got love for Harrison. Yeah, but Alonzo, I couldn't stand him when he was a Gator, and now he's a Met. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, so I want to talk just a little bit because I might not have you guys on before uh, uh, Donna's trial. Do you think there's um, – any witnesses or any inform like you said, there's a little nuance, Jerry, right? There's a little difference. Is there anything new you th- you will think that we'll see new witnesses or new like the Best Buy guy or or like do you think there's anything different we'll see that we haven't seen yet? Because uh, for example, in Charlie's trial, the birthday thing was kind of a new concept, right? Like I don't think we really knew about that so much before. Do you think there's anything maybe we'll see new in this, Jared? And then Katie? Well, I've I've heard the Best Buy guy passed away. No, um, I. That was – someone put that in our chat, and then uh, I think Judy A.A. Legal said, no, no, that's okay. – I don't think that's true. So I think he's, I think he's still around. Okay. I, I'm, I'm shocked we haven't heard from the Best Buy guy. Um, so, I, I, you know, maybe we will, or maybe he just has nothing to offer. Um, I think there's always something new in each trial, so I'm sure we'll see something new um, or, or maybe a, a little nuance on something we already know. Um, so it, it'll be very, very interesting to see what comes out and, um, you know, what, what we didn't know, you know, you brought up the birthday thing. Um, I guess my, one of my big questions was where's the receipt for the paella since they kept talking about paella, but I guess they, they actually have seen a receipt for paella. I talked to someone who said that that, that exists. Um, but there's just so many things around this birthday gift and everything that I'd love to, for them to dig into a little bit more. Well, if Donna's on the stand, right, we, we, I'm sure I'm sure that that's going to be a major cross question. And yeah, the paella wasn't a gift. Get out of my face with that. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Katie. Um, so the, the one that I think is going to be really interesting is Rob, if, if he takes the stand because of how many different ways he could impeach Wendy. And a lot of the stuff was about Donna. Well, she's not that involved in my life. And oh, I, I was breastfeeding and that's why they drove me back and forth. And and uh all these all these different excuses that are demonstrably false that she has given and she has not been confronted on uh, by Georgia. She just kind of let them go, probably because it was not a major part of the case that was being tried. You know, why why pick a fight over something stupid? So I I would imagine that Rob suddenly becomes important in this trial and that her for, for those of you who don't know, uh, she meddled in his life, made him break up with his uh, Indian uh, American wife. Uh, she, he then goes out, and marries a Jewish woman. Then she he he divorces her, goes back to the Indian American wife. Then they say, "Oh, we think it might be okay if you marry her." And there's just a lot of built up uh, resentment, I think. There uh, and Rob is essentially not a member of the family anymore, but he could testify to a lot of stuff that was going on in the early 2000s in this family man that is such a good point and like like jared said like each of these is there's nuance each of these cases are a little different so george is not going to go at certain win- witnesses the same in you know katie's trial as charlie's trial as donna's trial as potentially wendy's trial like and and she right jared, she has more stuff there's more stuff and she started to, to to talk about like she called out she talked about an email with wendy and wendy's like I didn't get that email or it wasn't important to me. And then she said, but you forwarded to one, two, three, like, and that was 13 that had, people, 13 or people and like that, that hadn't yeah. come up before. So she obviously has stuff that for Wendy and potentially Don and Harvey that we have not seen or know about. Well, and I remember Jack Campbell, uh, who is our excellent state attorney here in Tallahassee. Um, I remember him being interviewed about evidence and he flat out said, you guys have not seen everything we have, uh, which it would be wise for us to not have seen everything they have. You know, you use what you need to use to get the conviction, especially when you're trying to put together multiple convictions. You don't want to give that defense an opportunity to know what you have until discovery um, and, and to, to formulate your opinions or, or your arguments on things. It's the same way Rashbaum said, we purposely held back what our defense was going to be about this ridiculous layaway doubled extortion until their opening because we didn't want to give the state an opportunity to uh, 
to, to counteract that, which is funny because he said it was very successful and in no world is a conviction in under three <laughs> hours successful. Uh, but maybe it was successful and that no one knew it was coming. Um, including Wendy on the stand who said, no, I just learned that my brother has known for nine years who <laughs> murdered my ex-husband and the father of my children. That was when, when uh, Georgia was really exasperated. She's like, you didn't like, she was like, she couldn't, uh, a person who was very normally like holds it close to the chest, she could not hold her exasperation there. So, uh, and by the way, I want to make two quick points because I get a lot of comments on this. And first of all, they're very nice, but a lot of people will say, you need to send some of this to the prosecution. It's very nice, and I appreciate it, but I'm sure, guys, the prosecution has all the stuff. I'm just trying to, uh, you know, I was talking to Jared before the show started. I have I have three trials to go through. I have police interviews. I'm just trying to present it in a way that, you know, is, you know, I guess easy to understand or, or, or for folks who don't know it. So, like, I appreciate those comments, but I'm sure the prosecution has all the stuff. And the second comment I've been getting recently is, like, well, you don't want to do this because I was analyzing Wendy's uh, – police interview and they're like well what if she sees this they're going to use it for their defense guys this this police interview has been out for what nine years now like the, what i'm doing any of these things i'm sure that they're all well aware of well i appreciate the comments but i'm sure they're well aware right i mean go ahead jared i feel like go ahead. I, I well i see a lot of those comments too like you know i've seen people like this guy needs to be a i don't need to be a witness i have nothing that the prosecution doesn't already have that I could add to this. Um, yes, I knew them personally, but I was not involved in any way with, you know, the, the things that came about to bring us to this day. Um, we're just analyzing and we're giving our opinions on things. The prosecution has every bit of evidence they need. Uh, and the other thing too, is like, I've seen people that criticize the fact that we're talking about this before trials and that could that taint a jury pool? Believe me when I tell you that us having these conversations isn't doing anything to taint a jury pool. Um, this stuff has been out there for almost 10 years. July will be 10 years. Um, and while, you know, Jay's got a great, uh, you know, a, a great viewing and a, a great, you know, following. And so do some of the other folks on, on YouTube. Uh, Dateline, ABC's 2020, you know, uh, Investigative Discovery, all those channels, they got a ton of people watching and they're doing stuff on this case, Court TV, all of them. Like, believe me, if, if there was an issue with us tainting a jury pool, we'd have heard from the prosecution to, hey, can you guys shut your mouths? And mm -hmm. that's never happened. Right. And Katie, if, if they ask someone, which, by the way, it, it would be remarkable if they asked a juror and they were like, if, do you have any bias? And they're like, well, I saw J the shaming of Jay's uh, videos. That would be amazing. But if they too ask a jury, that like, see ya. That's call that's not even a that's not even a challenge. We see this in the day bill. That's just like you're gone. That's a motion for cause. So like, the, 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 yeah. I mean, so long if you can be fair and impartial, that might not be a cause motion, but it it certainly would be a really good reason for one of the si sides to use a peremptory uh, on you. I and I I also think that this is this is a big case in Tallahassee. It's a big case in Florida. It's, and nationally, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, they they're gonna get a jury in Donald Trump's case on Monday too. Uh, they may have to work at it, but they're gonna see one. It's gonna happen. You just may have to work a little bit harder. Doesn't mean that we don't get to talk about it. By the way, do you think they're gonna use that same uh, jury uh, uh, expert attorney to uh, to to try to <laughs> to Katie's face? Probably right now. not. <laughs> I mean, didn't they spend a million for that guy? I, I heard. Eubin uh, also goes on the Charlie Adelson bingo card, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, they also they they did hire a local attorney this time, so that that'll probably help them a little bit. Um. Wow. It's yeah, been out. What's that? I I said that's a good point. Um. Yeah. I I did want to say, uh, uh, Jared. I don't know if you've read Dan's pleadings in the divorce case. Um the Visigoth like sacking of the marital home. I'm really sorry. I never met this guy. Uh, I he, would have loved him. Dan, Danny was, uh, he, he was, he was fun to be around. Uh, I, like, but you know, I will tell, he always made me feel dumb because he was so yeah. damn smart. But the Visigoth like sacking of the marital home. I was just oh, yeah. like, oh. Wait, Kate, do you, by the way, do you have those? Do you have that? Because I've been trying to get a copy of those <laughs> just, to, just to look through the file. I went through my own very tough divorce. So I know it's uh, – if you have those, I'd love to see them if you're allowed to. I don't know if you're allowed. I, I don't yeah, know. If they're, they're public they're record. On, yeah. 
They're wow. on the po uh, uh, certain portions of them may be redacted because of the the age of the children. Um, but I I'm sure I can help you get the non redacted. Yeah. Oh, that would part. be great. Or, yeah, I would love to but see them. Like I mean, it's it, it's just written with such flair, and you can picture him like at his keyboard, just like pissed off and writing. And I'm like, ah, this is like I would have loved to have a beer with this guy. Well, you know, one thing I've I've talked about in other shows is because I I went through, believe it or not, I, I went through a tough divorce. Believe it or not, they they this is a true story. My uh, ex wife has my grandma Ruth's diamond that she kept after. So like I I get it. But one point I want to make about that, and maybe you can talk about this, Jared, is when, you know for 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 Dan, and I want to talk about Dan. I'm glad you brought him up, and just that like all like that consumes your life. I I expect especially when you're an attorney and you're writing motions but me as a non-attorney it consumed my life during that time not only me my family like and, and when it, particularly when it's contentious obviously if you're getting along and you're just like let's just do whatever but a contentious divorce you're, you're like for me i was like I'm, i was waiting for the next text i was waiting for the next email like oh god what do i gotta deal with now and i just can't imagine what it had been like for dan uh, and his family to deal with these scum Adelsons, like the sh they're, they're emailing about Hitler, you know, like, can you talk about that, Jared? Like, I'm sure that had to be so tough for him and, and his family. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, first of all, you've got two attorneys that are are battling it out. And, and I know Katie, you're, you're like me, you're married to a, an attorney as well. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's certainly interesting arguments on, on the home front, but two attorneys going through a divorce, um is already going to be contentious you add into it the vitriol that's involved in it and then you add into it uh the adelson family which we know is overly involved in her life which means they were likely and and from all the pleadings and everything we've heard overly involved in the divorce and then you also add into it the resources that they had, which meant that they could continue to fight this out, oh, uh, regardless of what happened and what the you know the divorce settlement was, and and all of these things. You know, there's just layers on layers on layers of vitriol that was going to happen during this divorce. I actually I spoke to a good friend of mine yesterday, who recently went through a divorce, and he was talking about the fact that his ex wife's family has unlimited resources, and so every time yeah. something comes up. It's another trip to the courthouse and it's another, you know, and they're not here in Florida, but um, he was just talking about it is consuming his life and he's a surgeon and all he wants to do is worry about surgery and his kids, but this is consuming his life. And so we could see from all the pleadings and from everything going on that this was consuming Danny's life. Um, and it's, it's just, you know, it, what the, the, the worst part about it is, though, you could see he was starting to move on. He had a girlfriend. Um, he was visiting her in New York. Who knows where that would have led? Um, it just, like you said, it consumed him. And it's, it's awful to think about that he died with that consuming his life instead of happiness and everything that should have come with having those two kids. You know, and I'll add one thing too that you you add to it is is you have it was the same with me. I had two little kids, and it's very clear. Okay, you could talk to this, and when we we all know about that famous grandma the motion. When you are trying to do your best to play by the rules, not you you know you know it's bad to bad mouth the other parent. You don't do that in front of your kids, and he knew from his kids that they weren't doing that. And, and we know, we could just tell, we don't need that motion yeah. to, to tell that the Adelsons were shitty in front of the kids. And and I'm um, sure probably still are about the, the Markles. Like, you know, it's just it just another level of like, you're just trying to do your best as a parent. And, you know, Jared talked about in the, the last interview, what a great parent that that Danny was. Um, but Kay, you're right. You could see it in those motions. Like they were just, he could, they were just, he was angry because they were being so shitty. Yeah. And rightfully righteously angry not just pissed because i'm getting divorced and i'm pissed at wendy for being a bitch but righteously i mean he they're they're poisoning his children and and then they got rid of him and now they've been poisoning his children for the past 10 years allegedly and also uh there. allegedly like not not disclosing money that they had like right. that like because because Oh, Wendy just loves to be like, oh, he owed money to me in the police interview. And he and she took, oh, it makes me so angry because you, oh, uh, but like, get out of here. Like she, like, anyway. Without just, emptying out half of the accounts behind his back and 
Right. Well, emptying the house when he's in New York at a conference. Right. I mean, taking half the stuff, and then going to going to South Florida, which again, interesting. She went to South Florida then, and then where does she end up after the memorial? South Florida. But she loved Tallahassee. Just loved it. I love when George is like, "You loved it." So when did you leave? Did you go back? No, yeah. but I, I've looked at opportunities. I forget what she says, but <laughs> I mean, this has been awesome, guys. And and the bottom line is, and I want to bring this up. The bottom line about all this, and I, I'll never forget. You know, Ruth and I have had a couple contacts, and she said, "Keep shining a light on this case." And that's why I, I appreciate you guys so much for coming on, because that's the whole point of all this, right? Like to get justice for Dan. I mean, it sucks that it's taken a while, but like keep a light and i was trying to give away like i want to keep a light on getting ruth and phil and the family to be able to see those kids again it's infuriates me so much and you know but i thank you guys for helping keep a light on this stuff because that's what this is all about it's about getting like you said katie you go to you want justice that's why you guys became attorneys you want justice in these situations and it seems like it but and, and now it seems like finally you know getting closer and closer but to me and the whole reason i'm doing the show is justice is we are we got we got Charlie. I mean, obviously Katie and Sigfredo, but Harvey and Wendy. To me, that's that's justice. So, I, any final thoughts? Because I, this has been just so amazing. I want to thank you guys. But uh, Jared and Katie, Katie, any any final thoughts you want to give on this? Well, I'll let, I'll let Katie go first. All right, Katie, go ahead. Um, yeah, no, my my final thoughts are: the more that I find out about Dan Markell, the more I I I'm sad that I never got to meet him and I didn't get to take his class. Um, because uh, the more I find out the, 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 the better things I hear about him and, you know, even reading his pleadings, I, I find myself going, man, we would have really gotten along. So that's my, my final thought. Yes. You know, I, I did know Danny. I was lucky enough to call him a friend, um, you know, and, and, uh, I guess that's one good thing that came out of, of knowing Wendy for as long as I did is I got to know Danny. Um, but the most important thing is, like you said, justice, making sure that those who are responsible for this crime uh, pay. Uh, and I don't mean financially, I mean, you know, uh, in the eyes of the law uh, and that those kids, uh, that, that the two um, Markel boys, number one, that they understand who their father was and what he thought of them even though he was only there for a short amount of time in their life and that they, they make their own decision on what they want to do in their life. And hopefully they decide to uh, take back their, their, their names for one, um, but that they build a relationship with their grandparents and that they understand that, uh, you know, those grandparents love them. Um, you hear it when Ruth and Phil talk that that's really all they want. They want that relationship. Yes, they want Wendy and whomever was responsible to pay. But what's really important to them is they want to build a relationship with those those kids. And so I hope that happens. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing Ruth here in Tallahassee when she's here for the the, the trial for unfortunate reasons. But um, you know that that's what's important. And I just wish peace for the Markells and uh and justice for for danny that's great that's beautifully said and i again i want to thank you guys and i i feel crap because i haven't been plugging guys please i put it in the follow there on my, uh, both katie and jared on twitter i always <laughs> it's in it's in the description if you're watching on the replay please give them a follow on twitter um you guys have been amazing i want to thank you guys so much um and again this is going to end and my wife has a, a 30 minute video on wendy that i think you guys are going to like she's been working on it for a while so it's going to take you right into that from this when I end this. So uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, and we'll catch you on the next one, everybody.